Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore how to cook in cleaner, faster, cheaper ways, while at the same time increasing family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice, while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experience as they shape up their shambas on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Caro, what would you say if I told you I have five crates of tomatoes for sale? <sighs> Tony, why would I need five crates of tomatoes when you already know I have a whole Shamba full of tomatoes? Exactly. You are the wrong market for my tomatoes. But I do need somebody who does need five crates of tomatoes. Hmm. How about schools? Hotels? Schools! Brilliant! And that's the importance of markets. If you as a farmer have a lot of crops and no markets, then what do you do? Find the right market. And that's what you are doing this week. Finding the right markets for your crops. So, let's start selling. Carol, do you know any good schools? Mm-hmm, I know. Menegai High School, uh, Ngara Boys High School. Today we are in Machakos and we are visiting the Mumo family. The last time we were here, we gave Victoria advice on how to plant orange fleshed sweet potatoes. And how to manage fall armyworm. This time, Victoria's husband James is here as well. He's recently retired and now works as a full-time farmer. And this is his wife Victoria. She's not only been raising a family of three children, she's been helping run the farm as well. Here she is with her granddaughter, Gift. And now the eldest son, Thomas, is helping too. He's just starting out on the road to become a full-time farmer. So, meet the Mumo family. Their farm covers four acres of beautiful Machakos countryside. Sweet potatoes is a favorite crop. Also maize, of course. And there are mangoes too. Looking good. Well, here we are, Caro, and I see our farmers are having breakfast. Let's hope you're not disturbing them. Or baby gift. Look, she's very cute. Let's get down to business. Aha, good to be here. How is farming going on, James? It's okay. Everything is going on well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thomas, yes. do you help around the shamba? I do farming also, and I help in cattle, really. Ah, yeah. mm -hmm. you are the future farmer. Keep it up, keep it up. Keep <laughs> and it does up. Mumo help too? <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, we are here. How can we help you? I would like to know how I can get more from, from orange, orange sweet potato. Okay, so that they can give you value. Yeah. All right. Mm, okay. I'm sure you have an expert for that. <laughs> Absolutely. So, James, yes. do you like sweet potatoes? Of course, yes. The orange fleshed? Yeah. I'm sure it's not only that that you do. So how else, how can we help you, James? Oh, you see, we have also mango. Aha. Uh -huh. we, we grow mango. Uh -huh. And we have a problem with the, where we can get the people who are going to buy for us. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. The market. The market. Uh -huh. We've come with our experts. Uh -huh. We'll have a look at the OFSP, what we can do with it. Uh -huh. And the mangoes. The mangoes. All right, thank you. Right, see you later. See you. All right. So let's pitch the tent and get ready for work. The last time we were here, the maize crop had fall armyworm. So we showed Victoria the push pull method, and now the crop is doing well. However, the pests are back in another field, and even worse. So we've decided to ask Duncan Mukunda from Sigenta to see what can be done. Since it first came to Kenya in 2016, the fall armyworm has spread throughout the country, damaging nearly one-third of Kenya's total maize crop. 
I do hope Duncan has a solution to this terrible pest. So, Duncan, yes, yes, yes. what are your observations? Yes, uh, after scouting the farm, uh, I've come across these destructive pests that have really defoliated our farmer's maize. Mm -hmm. This is called Folamo. Mm -hmm. This is how destructive the pest is. And, and they're see? so healthy. Yeah, and they hide inside. Eh? The okay. inside the, the, the maize. Okay. So you find like uh, during the day you cannot see them in All your right. naked eyes. Mm -hmm. Mostly they feed at night. Uh, mm -hmm. The life cycle of this uh, Folamo start from the eggs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we have the larva. Mm -hmm. The larva stage is around uh, five insta stage. And all of them, they are very destructive. Mm -hmm. You'll find like the first insta, you'll get such marks happening when they are feeding on that. Mm -hmm. As now the worm continue growing, it yeah. can, it's able to feed more and more. Mm -hmm. and that's why you can see the all holes. these patches mm -hmm. yes, happening. Mm -hmm. So, and eventually it will interfere with the production of the, the maize things. at large. Why do they attack? Is it because maybe the farmer has done something wrong? The pest, they are here to stay, and this is what they feed on. Mm -hmm. So basically when you are in production of maize, uh, Fallen worm will still attack your crop. So they are here to stay. Mm -hmm. It's us to manage them. Okay. Yes. All right. So yes. it can be managed. It can be managed. All right. So what yes. can our farmer do? In this case, uh, I think uh, our farmer was late to do the spray. Mm -hmm. yeah, looking at even uh, the lower leaves, mm -hmm. they were already damaged. And at this point, you can see the damage is happening. So actually, you look at our farmer, he has lost his crop mm -hmm. almost 70 to 80 percent. Uh, the of the, of the population of the crop mm -hmm. has lost because you can see it has really even affected uh, the flowers that yes. is coming out. Yes. And so, Duncan, yes. what is the solution? We have two products that they manage or control for them very well in maize. Mm -hmm. So we have the first product by the name March. So March is able to control all the larva stage and also the eggs. Two weeks uh, after germination of your maize, you come with March, spray it. Application rate for March yes. is 25 ml in 20, 20 liters, liters of water. Mm -hmm. So with that, you are able to cover a quarter of an acre. Mm -hmm. And then uh, later on, after two to three weeks, because the life cycle of Falamum take around that five days. Mm -hmm. yes. So probably by the time uh, you are coming to plant your maize, they had already lay, uh, laid, laid, laid eggs, eggs in uh, some other areas. So you'll find like uh, after three weeks, we'll have another cycle of the fall home. So that's why you need to come to with come the second again. spray mm -hmm. with another product by the name Volume Talgo. Okay. The reason why we are alternating the two products is yes. because of resistance. So for Volume Talgo, we used 20 ml in 20 liters of water. And, and yes. how often should this be done? So after you've done the second spray? So the farmer need also to go back to the farm and do the scouting, whether the pest is still there or not. If mm -hmm. it's not there, he doesn't need to do any other spray. But if it's there, you can still come back with March mm -hmm. and do the third spray uh -huh. at 25 ml in 20 liters 20 of water. 20 liters of water. Yes. Right. So from our company, we have a, a, a lesson that we take our farmers on how to do the spraying. Okay. And by so, we teach them or show them the kind of the clothes they need to put on when they are doing the spraying. These mm -hmm. are PPE. Those are personal protective gears. Okay. Let's get out of the sun and away from these horrible worms and see how we should protect ourselves when spraying. Chemicals are dangerous and can harm people as well as pests. That's why when spraying, always wear protective clothing. So I want to demonstrate how to wear the PPE. I have all my PPE with me. So we we'll start with the trouser itself. Up front now. We put it on top so that uh, the overflow does not get into. Now I wear my gumboots. Face mask. Googles. This is a head cap. These are the gloves I'm putting on. In this case, if you are spraying a crop which is below, this is how the graph should be. But if you are spraying like mangoes, uh, your graph need to be outside. Because in this case, you'll be holding uh, and uh, the product will be coming down. So if it's inside, it will get in. So that's it. All ready to start spraying. While Caro has been helping with the maize crop, I decided to go and meet Nicolas Nzioka from the European Investment Bank, the Bank of the European Union. Nicolas is going to help me find new markets for our farmers' mangoes. The EU and its bank, the EIB, is making a big investment in Kenya's farming sector through the AgriFi Challenge Fund. The main goal of this uh, funding mm -hmm. is to enable agri-SMEs 
to take on more produce from farmers. And when they do more business together, the, the smallholder farmer will be able to produce more. There will be more money in the farmer's pocket. And generally, this will lead to prosperous communities. Uh, yes. I see. So, so why are we here in this uh, factory? We are here to see for ourselves one of the beneficiaries of the EU funding. Um, an example of a very good company that works with the smallholder farmers. So Nicholas, can we say that what you are doing is supporting farmers for prosperous communities? Absolutely, Tony. Uh, you've hit the nail on the head. Exactly. So, let's go meet Jane. <laughs> okay, now let's find out from Jane how the EU has helped VAT expand their mango business into dried fruit with access to the European market and how in turn this helps farmers. Currently we cannot export fresh mangoes to Europe but if we add value, if we dry them, then we access the markets there. Then that gives VAT the capacity to engage with the small holder farmers and promise a market from the first fruit to the last fruit. And more importantly, we can ensure that we have as least as possible. We want to bring it to a nail of waste at the field level. How many smallholder farmers are you working with in the mango value chain? We have concluded contractual agreements with 3,000 odd farmers. This is one of the things that the AgriFi Kenya Challenge Fund has been instrumental because support to training the farmers to adapt the good agricultural practices to ensure there is a constant improvement in the production. We want to show them that we can make money out of the mango trees. So Jen, what message would you give to our farmers who are growing mangoes, especially the ones with the challenges of markets and wastage? Come one, come all. From all over Kenya? <laughs> From all over Kenya, precisely. We follow the mango season as it moves across the country. So they don't have to be worried at all? They don't have to be worried at all about the market. Mangos. We have a market for their all quality of their fruit. Wow, our farm will be happy to hear that. Well, this sounds fantastic. So I'm going back to the farm to tell our farmer about it. On the way, I've picked up VAT's chief agronomist, Joel Mugira. VAT not only buy all grades of mango, they help the farmer increase production too. We offer agronomy services to our farmers for free. We start with the farmer, right from when, the fa when we are preparing the trees. We do the pruning, all the way from flowering up to the fruiting stage, so that we ensure that the farmer can get the light quality of the mango we want. Do you collect all the types of the mangoes? What we do as we have, uh, we collect apples, we yes. collect uh, ngoi, like this one. Yes. We collect the tommy also from next season. Okay. We'll be collecting the kent. Actually, we want 40 tons per day, and we can only get that. 40? Yeah, 40 tons per day. So you, you still need a lot we of need mangoes? We need a lot of mangoes, a so, lot of mangoes. So even farmers out there should now get in touch with you yeah, get in and touch bring with all their mangoes bring to all you. the mangoes, all the mangoes, all the mangoes. We need all mangoes, the mangoes. We need you need, need mangoes. Mangoes, mangoes, mangoes. From mangoes. everywhere? From everywhere. Everywhere. Yes. <laughs> Bring all your mangoes! This EU and EIB project with VAT offer mango farmers both helping growing mangoes and a market for their crop, which includes exporting to Europe. That's a double win for all you mango farmers out there. So, Carol. Yes, Tony. How is it going? Ah, uh, fall army warm. Mm. 70% of our maize is lost by attacks by the fall armyworm. Yes. But the good thing is, it can be contained. Oh yes, and there's still more to come right, right after, after the, the break. break. And coming up after the break... A special on orange-fleshed sweet potatoes. Featuring Triple S. And more on finding markets. <laughs> Welcome back to Shamba Shepap. We are in Machakos and we are visiting the Mumo family. We have seen how to build markets for mangoes. And how to combat fall armyworm. But we also want to find out all about orange-fleshed sweet potatoes. 
No time to waste? Let's get back to work. For the rest of this episode, we are doing a special feature on orange flesh sweet potatoes. Caro is going to be finding out about using the orange flesh sweet potato puree in baking cakes and bread. But first, I'm taking Victoria to meet Dr. Samia Gili from SIP, the International Potato Center. I'm going to find out about the best way of storing sweet potatoes so they are ready to produce planting material for the next season. The technique is called Triple S, standing for store, sand, and sprout. Now, the first stage. The first stage in Triple S is the pegging of your plants. The peg should be high enough, about one meter, mm -hmm. so that they are clearly visible in yes. the chamber. Yes. You walk around and identify healthy looking plants. You put the peg close to the plant that you have identified. Yes. That will act as your source of roots for storage. How do you select the plant? Make sure that the plant looks healthy. Yes. Is not affected by any disease. There's no weevil sign on that plant. Mm -hmm. And also make sure that that plant has also shown some signs of bulking. You'll see that by uh, the soil cracking, right? So that yes. plant will tell you there are some roots below the soil. Uh -huh. So you can peg that plant to uh -huh. be a source of roots. Now that the best plants have been pegged, you can monitor them over the growing season. And when they are ready, here's some tips for harvesting. Make sure you don't damage the roots. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you cut the root, it will not be very good for storage. So remove the medium-sized roots. Now, this one is not very good for storage. Why not? Because, one, you can see the cracking that has occurred. The store, this might not store for a long time. Yes. And then you can also see that uh, part of the roots already have some holes, ah. which means there must have been some insects. Only choose the best roots for storage. Avoid roots that are too big or too small and roots that have damaged skin or cuts, as they will soon rot. Okay, so now it's time to see how best to store the potatoes. Sami, I can see you've got sand, I'm seeing a basin, and we've got our roots and a newspaper. Yes. Show us the triple S. You take your basin. You line it with the newspaper at the bottom and also at the sides. Remember, the roots are breathing. There is some moisture which is being given out. So the newspaper is going to absorb this moisture so that the environment remains dry. Take some dry sand and put at the bottom first. How, how much sand do you So put? for around two to three centimeters inch thick. How is the sand helping? There is no pathogens in it, no any organism. It's clean. It's clean. Now, once you are through with the putting sand at the bottom, you now take your selected roots and you start arranging them in the basin. The roots don't touch each other. The roots don't touch the sides of the basin. The roots should stand alone. Once you have uh, finished with that layer, mm -hmm. you take your sand and then you cover that layer and make sure everything is covered. Now, the last layer, make sure you put sand, which is about 5 to 10 centimeters thick. And this will prevent the rodents or even the chicken removing the sand and reaching at the roots very quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that layer must be thick. Uh -huh. You carry this now to the house or a room where it's cool and safe. For how long? You can store this for up to six months. And is it good to cover? Uh, you just leave it the way it is. Mm -hmm. Now, when you store like this, there will be some sprouts that will come out. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to remove those sprouts. So every month, any root that is rotten, you remove away and you bring them back again. Now, sometimes you might find the newspaper has disintegrated because of the moisture you can replace that newspaper. 
I can understand storage, I can understand sand. What is sprouting? Now, sprouting is, is where you take the roots outside the basin and transfer them to a well-prepared bed and you bury them with soil. If you water them a bit, they'll start producing some vines. Uh -huh. That is what we call sprouting. Victoria, what yeah. do you think of triple S? It's a good technology. Yes. If we do triple S, we'll increase the fines and will not have any cost at all. Good. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. Parts of Kenya will see a lot of rain this coming week, while others remain dry. Counties expected to have either no rains or rains below 5 mm include Marsabit, Wajia, Isiolo, Garissa, Tana River, Kitui, Machakos, and Makweni. Northeastern and parts of coastal region will have less than 15 mm of rain. This includes Turkana and Mandera. Parts of coastal region expect quite a lot of rain ranging between 25 to 50 mm. This includes Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa and Kwale. The majority of central Kenya and neighboring counties, including Laikipia, Meru, Nyeri and Nyandarwa, also expect rain of 25 to 50 mm. Kajiado, Taita Taveta, Nairobi, Kiambu, Tharakanithi, Embu and Kirinyaga will expect low rains of less than 15 mm. North, Central and South Rift Valley, West Pokot, Transoia, Wasingishu, Elgeyo Marakwet, Nakuru, Narok, Nandi and Kericho expect rain of 25 to 50 mm. Western and Nyanza regions expect a lot of rain. This could be more than 75 mm. Counties included are Bungoma, Kakamega, Siaya, Vihiga, Kisumu, Homabay, Migori, Kisi, and Nyamira. Here are our tips for the week. Continue weeding as weeds will be competing with your crops. Now is also the time to scout for pests and diseases so you can take action to control them early. For more tips, get in touch with iShamba on 0711-082-606. See you next week on the Shamba Shepa Farming News. Now it's time for me to see how all that hard work Tony has put into storing potatoes for planting pays off when we come to eat the potatoes. I'm here at the Yata Bread Bakery in Machakos to meet head baker Geoffrey Mudamba. They use orange fleshed sweet potato flour to bake their bread. But making the flour is a time consuming and expensive process. So I've asked our expert Molly Akinyi from Sweet Tunda to introduce the farmer to a new, cheaper, quicker way of using orange fleshed sweet potatoes in baking. Molly has bought some long life vacuum packed puree. Now let's see how it compares to using flour. Uh, what's the difference between mm -hmm. the sweet potato flour mm -hmm. and the puree? Okay. So for the sweet potato flour, you get your sweet potato, you dry it, and then you mill it, and you get the sweet potato flour. But now for the puree, you boil it, you mash it, then that's how you end up with the puree. The other difference between the two yeah. is that one of them has high water content, okay. while the flour is very dry. So you as a baker want to make sure that the proportion of the puree to flour is proportionate to the water content in both. There is steaming mm -hmm. and then there is boiling. Yes. Uh, so most of us are used to just boiling our mm -hmm. nguashes. Mm. Is this the right way to get the most out of your, your nguashe? So when it comes to the two um, processes of cooking, mm -hmm. steaming you get a better nutrient profile and even flavor. Mm -hmm. While boiling waters down the flavor of the orange flesh sweet potato puree. What is so special about the orange fleshed sweet potato? because it has a higher content of beta carotene that is very useful in the curing of night blindness and it's a, it is a precursor for vitamin A. For this recipe, we will need one kilogram flour, 300 grams of orange fleshed sweet potato puree, eight grams of yeast, four grams of calcium, 25 grams sugar, 15 grams of fat, and 10 grams salt. Now let's get baking. 
you make a hole at the center. Then you put all ingredients which uh -huh. you have measured. Yes. You have to rub in uh -huh. so that uh, it can mix well. So once our chef has been able to mix the flour with the fat, now we add the puree and we'll mix it thoroughly. You will need one part orange fleshed sweet potato puree and three parts flour. That is okay. Yeah. We mix it into our flour. When we use the orange fleshed sweet potato, yes, it even has its own sugar. Yes. So that means the money you would have used for sugar, you cut down on that. Definitely. Yeah, you cut down on the flour. On the flour. Uh -huh. And even when it comes to the oil, mm -hmm. when you're cooking baked items or even fried items, yes. the sweet potato, orange fleshed sweet potato puree mm -hmm. will take less oil mm -hmm. when you're frying it. Wow. Normally, the bread will have simple carbohydrates, but now once you add the sweet potato, it has complex carbohydrates which are much harder to digest, making it very beneficial for people with diabetes and other different conditions. And it seems you're not going to use a lot of water. Compared to the flour, mm -hmm. the content of water in the puree is 90% higher. Uh -huh. After it has mixed well, mm -hmm. you, you add uh, some flour in the table, then you need okay uh, so that mm -hmm. you get a good texture okay mm -hmm. yeah you need for about three minutes three minutes yeah now let's get baking so now we cut the dough into 450 gram sizes enough to make a standard sized loaf of bread we give it a final roll and place into the baking tins if you're baking at home, heat your oven to 250 degrees Celsius and bake for 30 minutes. And here it is. Our bread is ready. I can't wait to taste it. It looks so good. Now these are nice looking chunks our head baker is cutting for us. The orange fleshed sweet potato puree not only adds flavor, it adds vital nutrients the body needs like vitamin A. Using puree enhances the baking process while preserving nutrients. Delicious and nutritious! Another great day for Shamba Shape Up! We found a new market for mangoes! And all about the orange-fleshed sweet potato! But now, our work here is done! So, we'll see you next week on Shamba, Shamba Shape, Shape Up!